This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Forest City, Iowa. We're glad you could join us as a part of the Interlink community, wherever you are at, on Facebook, on YouTube, or listening on the radio on KIOW 107.3 FM. Broadcast this morning is given in memory of Forey Buffington uh, on the day of their their wedding, Forey and Jan's anniversary from John and Karen Munson. So thank you very much for that. Today's worship service is is pre-recorded as we are gathering this morning outside on the front front porch of, of the church because this we, uh, this week is God's work our hands. So following worship, there'll be lots of opportunities. So if you're joining us. Uh, join us right at 9.15 today. You can come on over right after the worship service, and we got some things going on at the church. Or you can do something at home, whatever you think think of, to show God's work our hands. Some of the things we'll be up to today includes Thinking of You greeting cards, uh, Lutheran World Relief School backpack packing, packing, the Lutheran World Relief quilt tying, healthy snacks for some Waldorf International students, decorating cookies for shut-ins, a neighborhood prayer walk, a shut-in serenade, and bottled water handout. There's all sorts of things going on today for God's work, our hands. So thank you for all who helped pull that together and all those participating in many different ways. A couple other announcements. Promised Land is beginning this week. We had a wonderful rally day on Wednesday, and we're kind of continuing that rally idea today with God's work our hands. So we'll be back into a normal flow starting this Wednesday with Promised Land. And uh, the meal will begin on Wednesday at 4.30 to 6, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade confirmation in Promised Lands at 5.30. So middle school time will be at that point. Worship's at 6.30. 9th and 10th grade confirmation and high school youth group are at 7.30. And then on Sundays, we'll have Promised Land at 10.15. So there's all sorts of things happening as the fall programming year gets underway. A reminder that the mission and emphasis for this quarter is Ingham Okaboji Lutheran Bible Camp and Riverside Bible Camp. So there's lots of ways to give to that. There is a Zoom coffee fellowship immediately following worship, too, if you want to join with that. And as always, you can find the, the prayer list and what's happening, the calendar, everything going on at Emmanuel, at emmanuelfamily.com. And you can find the announcement sheet if you're looking for that and see what's going on. Those are all the announcements for this morning. So with that, let's prepare our hearts for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sin to the one who welcomes us with open arms and open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Dear friends, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is true. By the gift, by the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you whole. God makes you righteous. Receive the glad, with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We sing together our gathering hymn, 805, Lead On, O King Eternal. Yes. 
shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords the clashing nor roll of stirring drums, but deeds of love and mercy and heavenly kingdom comes. Lead us, O King, eternal, we follow not with fear, for gladness breaks like morning wherever your face appears. Your cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in this light, the crown awaits the The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O oh God, th through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you re transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from evil, take up our cross, and follow Jesus, who is your Son and our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. The psalm for today is Psalm 116, verses 1 through 9. And feel free to follow along with me in the light wording or follow along with Mark in the bold wording. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me wherever I'm called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low when God saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt well with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. 
but no one can tame the tongue. A restful evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Word of God, word of life. The gospel for today comes from Mark, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 27th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked them, Who do people say that I am? They answered, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and others still one of the prophets. Okay, but what about you? He asked. Who do you say that I am? Peter said, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them about the Son of Man and how he must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Peter, get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Then he called to the crowd, called the crowd to him among him with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone's ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes to his Father in glory with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we've mentioned it before, and I'm going to mention it again. Today is God's work, our hands. And maybe you've, you've been a part of this before. Maybe you know what I'm talking about, what, what's going on with God's work, our hands. There's lots of activities going on here around the church and, and around the ELCA today of different ways in which we can, be, can do God's work with our hands. But what exactly is that? What, what does that phrase actually mean? What's the point of even calling it God's work, our hands, if I don't fully understand what you're asking me or telling me we're going to be doing? Uh, I know it's been done for many years, but what exactly is God's work, our hands? And I bet if I asked you that question right now, you'd probably have a lot of different answers. Maybe you have some similar answers, but I I bet there would be quite a variety of understandings of what exactly God's work our hands is. So I thought, why don't we break that down today, those two little phrases, God's work in our hands, and look at both of those individually for a little while, because guess what? They both tie into the Scripture for today, all the Scripture passages. This is a great weekend in which to have it, because it ties together great. So let's break it down. Okay, first question when we're looking at God's work, okay, who is God? Now, again, I I bet if I asked you that question, uh, you probably have a variety of responses because we probably have similar understandings of God and yet different and yet still tied together into the Scriptures, right? 
So who is God? What on earth is that? Uh, what, what even beyond earth is God? What, what are we talking about? What, who, who is it? What is this work we're doing? I don't understand. Who am I doing this work for? And that ties in great to today's scripture readings, especially Mark, because Jesus asked that very question. First, he says, okay, who do people say that I am? What do they understand? Well, some say Moses, or not Moses, but um, John the Baptist, others Elijah. Some may uh, think you're one of the other prophets that are out there. And Jesus says, all right. So that's what they think. What do you think? Who do you say that I am? Who am I? I want you to tell me right now. Jesus is saying, come on. And Peter, good old Peter, he says, you're the Messiah. That's who you are, Jesus. You are the Messiah. And Jesus says, don't tell anybody. Now, that might seem kind of weird, right? If you think you know exactly who God is, if you think you know who Jesus is, why would you want to be told, don't tell anybody? Good answer, but don't tell anybody. I don't want anybody to know that at the moment. Why? Well, maybe does Peter know exactly what the Messiah means besides the Savior? Is Peter thinking that Jesus is going to go right into Jerusalem on a white horse with a shield and some armor in front of him and form an army around them and they're going to throw out the Romans? Is it going to be a little more violent? Is it somebody that's not going to, is going to do exactly what he thinks is going to happen? Is that what the Messiah is? Because Jesus goes on to say, okay, I'm going to tell you now who I am and what I'm going to do and what this word Messiah is. So this is what this is kind of like a gospel in the nutshell in which Jesus says, Okay, the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and he must be killed, and after three days rise again. That's what it means. That's what I'm here to do. And maybe he didn't want anybody to tell, say that Jesus is the Messiah, because immediately after this, Peter says, Jesus, okay, no, 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 wait. That's not exactly what the Messiah means. I think you misunderstood what I meant by the Messiah. And Jesus just says, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. This is exactly what I meant. Don't try to change my mind. You cannot do that, Satan. You can't. You've tried it before in your temptations. You're trying it now. You're trying to confuse things. You're maybe trying to confuse those around This is what I've been sent to do. This is who I am. And this is what it means who Jesus is. This is the one we're coming around together to do the work of, of God, of of Christ, of Christ, the Christ who was sent into this world to do exactly what he said, to suffer, to die, and in three days rise again and change the narrative completely. Do we really want to know that truth sometimes? Do we want to know when when we are asked that question, who do you say that I am? And we say, well, you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are the Messiah. You are are my best friend. You are are Emmanuel. You are the Savior of this world. You are grace and truth personified. You are all these things. You are God. You are exactly who I need in my life. And when we say those things— Do we always want to know what goes with that when we go into the deeper meaning and unpack exactly what each of those things are? Because knowing this, knowing this truth changes everything about us and about our relationship with God and the world. Instead, Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Take it up. Lose your, lose your self-centeredness and follow me. Your life is changed forever. Because I came, I suffered, I died, I rose again, and I changed everything. So take up that cross and follow me, the way, the truth, and the life. Take, take it up into the world with your hands, your voices, your life. Take up what exactly Messiah means and go. And we are called to do so many different things. When you look at our hands, okay, 
So we understand who God is or we, who Christ is. What is it the work that you're calling us to do? What are, do you want to do us to do with our hands, our voices, and our lives? And it is so many things, isn't it? It's not just a cookie cutter list of things. We all have so many different gifts, so many different talents, so many different things we are called to do. Even as, as you look at Isaiah, I've been given the voice of a teacher. You look at James, not everybody is supposed to be a teacher. Because who knows what can come out of that teaching. It could end up starting a fire. We are called in so many different ways at so many different stages of our lives. And yet it's all pulled into this spot of God's work, our hands. And it's not always easy to do these things we're called to do, to go out, to lift our voices, to lift our hands, to lift our lives to, to God. It's not always easy, but we go as, as if we were to add a little couple more verses into Isaiah at the very beginning before what we're, we're, we heard today being read aloud in Isaiah. We hear this. By my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a desert. Their fish stink for lack of water, and they die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and make a sackcloth their covering. But the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Sent out into a world that sometimes seems like it is just full of darkness and things are falling apart around us. And it's not just today. It's been the history of, of humanity, it seems like. There's always something like that. But that's what we're called into. We're called to use our voices, our hands, our lives to God into this dark and weary world that needs to be sustained by the word. The word of God. The word Jesus Christ. And it's not about us. It's about God lifting our hands, our voices, and our lives. Not for me, not for yourselves, but for God, for our neighbor. So what does God's work, our hands, mean? I asked you this very question. Here's what you gave me. It's people who need help, physical human help. God is made manifest in human life by doing the work of the world. Love is action. Acts of love bring God to life for others because God is love, helping others. He inspires and directs the work we carry out with our actions. We serve him. We serve and honor him. If we share the gifts of God that he's given us, we could eliminate poverty. He doesn't work for the feed the hungry. We do. He doesn't clothe the poor. We do. We do his work with our hands. We lift our voices, our lives, our, our hands to do God's work in this world. And it's not just a today thing. It's not just a gimmicky one day a year God's work, our hands Sunday. It goes beyond that in each and every day of our lives in so many different ways. I can't even tell you how many different ways that comes about. But I want you to hear hear this, this passage from Matthew that we say at every baptism. And this week we do happen to have a baptism, baptism outside for, for worship. And I hear these words that we, we say each and every time when we hand that candle off to the family and we speak to that child. You may not understand these words, but hear them and let them stick in your heart. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So today I'm not going to put an amen onto this message. It's going to be open-ended. It's going to be open-ended because God's work using us, our lives, our hands, our voices continues. It doesn't end right here. It is ongoing. That carrying of, of the cross and following Christ is ongoing. It is most certainly true. It is. And that's sometimes what the amen can be. This is most certainly true. Yes, yes, and Yes. But we're not going to put it on here right now because this isn't the punctuation. This isn't the period to what, what we're called to do. It's a continuation for the Messiah, for Jesus, who came for us all. So the only way I can think of at least putting a comma on today's message would be the ending of the bulletin that I saw each and every week growing up that said, Our worship is over. Our service begins. So, 
we lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives. Take us, take us, Jesus. We know who you are. Send us, use us, use our hands, our voices, and our lives for you. Having heard the gospel proclaimed in our midst, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will judge, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Here. We are here, heirs of God. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, we have made yourself known for bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church so it can be a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy. Creating God, you brought life into being mean and called it good. Bring new uh, creation to lands that have been devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Regrow and restore forests and slow down the overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy. Protecting God, you want all people to live in peace and safety. Take care of people during this time of COVID. Keep us safe from danger. We thank you for science and doctors and all who take care of us. 
when we are sick. Keep our first responders and health care workers safe and healthy. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in their mercy. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the upset and oppressed. Break the chains people use to discriminate and create injustice. Raise us, raise, raise up voices up that go unheard and help us to hear them. Help us also to be brave enough to speak for those who need us to advocate for them when they are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy. Gathering God, you bring this community together. Shape our lives so that we can that we pray and praise and worship you. We bring you honor. Help us encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase the joy we feel when we work together for you. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, you take care of us in every stage of life. We thank you for us to keep over, watch over baby Ruby Sue, Daryl, Donna, Sandy, Jill, Catherine, Ashley, Tim, Isaac, Jenny, Missionary Karen, the Evangelical Church of the Machianis. Lord, in your mercy, receive these prayers. O oh God, and those in our hearts, known only for to you, those through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of Christ is be with you always. Pass the peace according to your household, however you feel safe. The peace of Christ is in your midst and in our hearts. Carry uh, Christ's peace with you into the world. Spread it through the acts of kindness. to walk this earth with sandals on his feet. Many people would gather round just to hear him speak. With his voice he'd heal the sick and open the eyes that could not see. And just to think that life that lives in him is now a part of me. Now he's walking in my shoes. He's singing with my voice. He's reaching out with my hands, helping someone make the right choice. He's smiling with my face. He's showing me the way. And I'm so glad that I can be a part. He's living in my heart. With his voice he'd speak and calm the angry sea. Yet he said that one day we do greater things than he. He forgave the man that nailed him to a tree. And just to think that life that lives in him is now a part of me. Now he's walking in my shoes. He's singing with my voice. He's reaching out with my hands, helping someone make the right choice. He's smiling with my face. He's showing me the way. And I'm so glad that I'm a part of his plan. He's working with my hands. Now 
He's walking in my shoes. He's singing with our voice. He's reaching out with our hands, helping someone make the right choice. He's smiling with our face. He's showing us the way. And I'm so glad that we're a part of his plan. He's working with our hands. The Spirit empowers our giving. For in giving we rise above our fears to trust in the living God, who is the giver of every good and perfect gift. In anticipation of forthcoming offerings and in trust that God will provide for the ministry we are called to do, let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain down from heaven. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending song, God's Work, Our Hands, tune 731, uh, Earth and All Stars. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. 
that you may be a blessing. Amen. Let us go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone.